Hey guys. So not only do I draw the girly pops of the internet in satire form. But I'm also in the process of trying to figure out how in the oh, to make a comic book. Go same. It is a long, extensive process from writing to scripting to character design and personality traits and page layouts and etc etc etc. And hopefully one day I'll get to show you the final product that you can read and purchase on places like Webtoon or Tapas or even have the physical products in your hand off Shopify or something. And you know what, yeah, despite my pessimistic tone, everything's going quite smoothly, you know. Um, but today I'm in a kerfuffle. I'm in a dilemma because my main character, Umji, is mixed race, but how do I even depict? A black person or an Indian person or anyone with darker skin tone in traditional mediums and as you can see my style is literally black so and how in the fuck do I depict a black character and if you know help me help me nigga so let's jump into my mind for a second so you can understand the thought process behind this video. So, the most obvious and first thought I had was to use brush pens. And brush pens can be broken down in two categories, alcohols and inks. Inks are water-based, so that includes any water brush, okay? And the initial plan is to write my comic book back to back in one of these books, including the cover. Move, bitch! And the reason why alcohols are a complete fucking no is because this these papers, this book, is a uh, 140 GSM. And I'm about to show you on a piece of paper which is 150 GSM why alcohols are just not the one. I can't stand alcohols. Copics, I'm sorry, they fucking suck. I hate them. So here's the paper that I snatched out of a cast art sketchbook. And we're first going to test out an alcohol marker that I bought fucking centuries ago. Because I just didn't like them. Because I thought, because you know the hype around Copics are like the best pens and they create vivid colour and they're like really cool. I fucking hate them. They stink. It's too strong. And yeah, they do bleed through the paper, which you're going to see right now. But the pros of alcohol markers is that they layer so fucking beautifully. It's orgasmic. I'm not going to lie to you. Look at that shit. Look at it. Who's got money to burn to keep buying paper just to use these fucking pens? Fuck nah. Also, can we all take the time to appreciate my song while? The concentration, y'all. The concentration. You know what? Yeah, I like Faber Castells. They're pretty much just felt tip pens, but they're like bougie felt tip pens. Do you know what I mean? They don't bleed, which is great. And you can layer them just like alcohol pens. But what is with the texture, bro? There is so there is so much texture. When you used to use those colouring uh, uh, felt tips in school, and they would just tear up the paper. It's bougie enough that it doesn't tear up the paper, but you can tell it's on its way. Do you know what I mean? It don't bleed though, which 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 is why I use them. But they're kind of ugly looking. Unless you want that texture, they're kind of ugly. I'm not gonna lie. So this is when I had my eureka moment. If I use ink in my pencil brush pen to block out dark colours, why can't I just get another ink but in grey? Genius, I'm a, I'm a fucking genius. You can layer it, it's flat, it's a happy medium between the Faber Castell and the Winsor & Newton because it's not completely flat like the alcohols but it's not textury as well. 
So I went over to the handy dandy YouTube and started looking for inks that I could use which are grey. And the trouble with grey is that it can come in multiple of colours, meaning that there can be reds and blues in there, or there can be just blues, or sometimes they could be just green. And that's not what I'm going for. I want charcoal. I want like HB pencil grey. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is what I found. I also considered cross hatching and just hatching in general, which I did do over on my TikTok, but I don't know. I don't know if I like the one that I did over on TikTok is with a black pen and these pens that I bought that are Windsor Newtons are grey pens but y'all tell me if you guys can even spot a fucking difference can you tell which pen I used because bitch I can't did I just spend seven pound on pens that you can't even fucking tell I used bro I put it there and I put it there and I put it under his top lip too but like you can't tell where where bro where Okay, so just so I can wrap my brain around which is the best one to use, um, we're going to do a comparison page. So we got five panels, we got the, my original style, then we got hatching, Faber Castell, Noodler's Ink, and Noodler's Ink watered down in different variations. But I already know what the Faber Castell is going to look like, but I just want to prove to you that I'm not changing shit that they look ugly and they're not necessarily ugly pens but you just have to use them for certain things do you know what i mean and please do not come for me and the way that i'm drawing i just got these pens the other day and they're uni ball pens and like they literally grip the paper they got that gorilla grip bro you even lightly touch it the ink's going on there it's transferring it's insane you know you know what yeah you know what the hatching's growing on me the only thing is that you have to be very very precise on each line because they overlap like you see on her cheek it overlaps and it looks kind of ugly but the pros is that i can shade and it looks nice like i can cross hatch it instead of just single hatching it and it a great i can't talk and it creates a great shading technique that's that's all i wanted to say we can do a good gradient with the hatching technique. That's all, that's all I wanted to say. All right, moving on to the Faber Castells. We've got cold gray. This is the lightest color that I have, but I'm pretty sure there's one more lighter shade that I was hunting down for on Google for hours, but it's, I'm not, I'm not paying for shipping from the US. I'm just, I'm just not. Ah, savior is here. The nude is ink. I feel like they're trying to impress <laughs> oh. you in some place. Like they're trying to hold you down. They don't want to. They don't want you to get more. Bitch. Like, I feel like that's all I'm gonna say. Not even give you some messages. Okay, let's move on to what you don't see. Bitch, it's filled to the fucking brim. Bro. To the what? To the goddamn bramovelous brim? Yeah. That is so. It's so full, y'all. Oh, it's grey. It's grey. Oh, it's grey, grey. This is not what I was expecting. So the complete carnage that this ink just made made me completely forget what I was doing on this panel, which was watering down the ink. But I just thought if I get a wider brush and like avoid layering, it could it could work. It could work. Oh my god. It's such a nice grey as well. It is such a nice grey. You know what grey it's giving? It's giving Japanese wood print. 100%. You can't, you can't. That's you can look at look at the grey. It's such a nice grey, but you can't layer it. Because you'll get the, these lines. Look, I, I don't know 
know many people with, with a dumb waiter, but I don't know anybody who'd be okay with some stranger breaking into the house and riding on it. That's what's wrong with the world these days, you know? The word neighbor just doesn't mean what it used to. Okay. Bro, as you can see, I moved my two paintings that I was in the middle of doing. But I've been procrastinating. And because I don't have a desk easel, I use my teapots to mount my canvases when I can't be bothered to stand on my giant easel. Bro, I just made a whole new planet in that tea jar. Do you, do you see that? Oh my fucking god. Bro. So, it's been about three days since the last experimentation with the Noodler's ink and this time I actually tested out the gradients with diluting it with water. The one that I'm putting at now is, I think it's at its purest form and then the rest are diluted. The thing that I noticed with the Noodle's ink, if you dilute it, there's less chance of layering and it looking funny. As you can see here with my uh, main character, Umji. When I started going to darker shades is when you can really see the uh, brush strokes. It's not it, mate. It's not it. I was also thinking about um, highlighting blood in red and that being the only colour in my comic book. But it's not waterproof because I got them from Poundland because I wasn't spending £10 on coloured pens. Here I try to layer the Noodler's Grey to give like shadow and more depth but as you can see it's fucking hideous so we're just not going to do that. The plan is anything to do with shading is hatching and hatching only. And when using the Noodler's Grey it's either a layer of dark pigment or a layer of light pigment. And a thing that I've noticed here yeah, with this Hobbycraft paper is that it's rough and I don't know if that's contributing to the wibbly wobbliness. but when comparing them to the Cass Art book, the Cass Art ones are pretty smooth and I have a feeling that the porousness, is that a word? The porosity of the paper is going to fuck me up in the long run. But honestly though, those 10 GSM really make a fucking difference this is what i was googling and googling and googling i even youtubed it but i couldn't find it anywhere it's clear that even just 10 gsm makes a fucking difference okay i feel like i can see through the 140 gsm from hobbycraft very easily compared to the cast art ones <clears throat> i just ate ice cream and my throat is frozen the whole point of this video was to find an easy traditional way to illustrate black people and the most obvious option would be to use digital but I'm, I'm, I suck at digital. So if you're struggling like me and you're a black and white traditional comic book artist, I've found some black and white artists and even black um, comic book writers that you can take inspiration from instead of struggling like me. So here's the two examples that you've seen on my thumbnail, consisting of single hatching and ink. And you know, like I said earlier, the hatching is growing on me, but um, I feel as if it's a technique that you would have to consistently do to perfect. See now with the ink, I pretty much feel as if it flattens the whole picture. Do you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't, it looks kind of flat, but I don't know if that's the vibe that I'm going for. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys and see if your expertise can help my journey. Nah, nah, you see, you see, you see, you, yeah. I know for a fact you ain't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you know. Don't you know I'm one of them CIA pigeons? Now subscribe so I can do my happy little pigeon dance. And don't forget to drop a like as well. I would also love to know your opinion on this new presentation of myself. And should it stay? And should I do more stuff about art? 